Welcome back to the porch. It's been a long time since we've been here together, but we thought we'd take a little break from our tools and we'd look again at this passage that we introduced to you oh, about four weeks ago. Remember the one out of Hebrews, the passage about running the race with endurance? So we're gonna take a little closer look at that today and we're gonna do a, just a really quick review to make sure you all remember what we've been learning for nearly, I think, three months now. So first of all, all spring, we talked about what it means to live for God and all the things he does in and through us. The molding, shaping, the transforming, how he is our great shepherd, our refuge, a place we are at home. So we talked about all the things that he does in us. Then, just a few weeks ago, we transitioned to our summer series and we introduced to you a big question. Will we live this life with the crown on our head or the crown on God's head? Running the race on our own or running the race with him? So that's what we've been talking about this summer and we will continue to talk about is how we do that. What's next after we make this decision? Of course, you heard from Teacher Judy and you heard from Pastor Kerry talking to you about two of the tools that God has given us to run this race for him. Now, let's look at the Hebrews passage that we introduced to you just a few weeks ago. Remember when we were at the Bloomsday Runners and we introduced the verse of running this race for God? So we learned from this passage a lovely framework of the foundation of how we live for God. So first he tells us what we are to do. We're to run this race for him, right? So then he tells us how to do that, to look to Jesus, to fix our eyes on Jesus. It actually says he is the founder, the one who started our faith. He's also the perfecter of it, meaning he is the one that carries it out to the end. He is the one who's molding and shaping and transforming us in our faith. So he tells us first what to do, then he tells us how to do it. But there's two other parts to this verse that I think would be helpful for us to look at before we continue on looking at all of these tools the rest of the summer. It says, let us also lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely to us. So. He tells us not only what we're supposed to do, he tells us also what we're not supposed to do. What we're to put on and what we're to put off. We're to put on, put in ourselves all the words of the Bible, to take in the Bible, to take in God's Holy Spirit working in us. But we're also to put off sin and anything that keeps us from running this race. An example of this, I told you before, you might remember, that I come from a family of runners, and my brother was running a cross-country race one time when, in the middle of the race, his feet started aching. He had new shoes, and he was getting blisters on his feet, and it was keeping him from running the race well. It was slowing him down. And so what would be the most logical thing to do if you were in this situation? You'd take off your shoes. So that's exactly what he did. He took off the shoes that were hindering him or holding him back from running this race. And he just ran barefoot and ran very well, I might add, all the way to the finish. He took off what was hindering him from running and finishing well the race set before him. So we are to do this too. And the Holy Spirit, like Carrie talked about last week, helps us to do this very thing helps us to see the things that we need to put off. And the Holy Spirit works through the things we're supposed to put on. All right, so as we end this verse, this is the really good part. Why do we know we can trust God to do all of this? How do we know he truly loves us? It's right in this next verse. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? He endured the cross himself despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So you see in this passage, we see all these components of what it means to follow Christ. We see what we're not supposed to do, laying aside anything that hinders us from running this race. 
God calls us to what we are supposed to do, run the race by fixing our eyes on him, looking to him to help us to run the race, which means spending time with him. So we know what not to do. We know what we're supposed to do and how to do it. And he ends this beautiful passage reminding us that we can trust him, that he truly does love us and has the power to lead us on this life because he's already endured the cross. He's already paid the price for you and for me so that we might be free to run this race with him and for him. So I wanna take you on a little field trip again because that's what we like to do from the porch. So we're gonna go someplace and I'll give you a couple hints of where it is. It involves sand, it involves sun, it involves maybe needing a hat, mm, sand toys, yes, the beach. And we're gonna see a visual example of Christ as our shepherd, as our constant helper like Carrie talked about last week to help us to do exactly what this verse says, running the race with endurance, setting our eyes on him, knowing that he has the power to do it and to take us all the way to the finish line. So come on with me and I'll see you at the beach. Well, welcome to the beach. I hope you brought your floaties and your sand toys and your sun hat. Well, I wanted to show you, as I said, a visual example of Jesus being with us our, as our constant helper, like Carrie talked about last week. So I'm gonna show you some footprints in the sand. And you'll notice there's not just one set of footprints, but there's two, because Jesus is always with us as we run this race for him. He is always directing us, he's always guiding us, he's molding and shaping us, he is transforming us as we run this race for him. But I want to remind you of one other thing. He doesn't just tag along on this race that we are on, he is truly leading us on it because he already knows the race that we're on. He knows where it's going to go and he knows where it finishes and he's with us the whole way to the end. So now look at our visual example for you to remember that Jesus is your constant helper. So I hope this is a great reminder for you as Jesus is our constant helper all throughout this race, all the way to the end. I hope you also don't forget to pick up your compasses at the church as another reminder of Jesus as your constant helper. And next week we won't see you, but we'll see you the week after. And all throughout the summer you'll continue to hear about these great tools, these gifts to help you keep your eyes focused on Jesus as you run this race for him. We love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you soon. Bye for now. He who
faithful, faithful. For he who promised is faithful. I know, I know. For he who promised is faithful, faithful. <laughs>